Let's examine one of the many reactions involved in the hydration of cement to form cement paste. Cement is arguably the most important uh, component of concrete, so it's really important for environmental engineers and civil engineers uh, to understand some of this chemistry. So in this reaction, we have tricalcium silicate reacting with water to form calcium silicate hydrate or cement plate paste uh, along with lime. You may be reminded of stoichiometry, that is the theory of proportions in a balanced uh, chemical reaction, as you look at this equation. You'll also notice the stoichiomet stoichiometric coefficients. These are the numbers that precede the chemical formulas in the equation. You'll also notice the uh, forward-facing arrow, indicating that the reaction is irreversible, which is a good thing for cement, right, uh, and the production of heat. By the end of this video, you should be able to define um, and or calculate the following and apply them to mass balance. So this is stoichiometry, stoichiometric coefficients, limiting and excess reactants, fraction excess, yield, and selectivity. So let's go back to this equation. We can use the balanced chemical equation to learn more about the hydration of cement and make some good general conclusions given the information that we have in this chemical equation. First, we must always remember that the stoichiometry in a balanced chemical equation like this tells us about molar ratios. Whenever you're writing down molar ratios uh, for a balanced chemical equation, designate which compounds react and which ones are produced. For example, uh, in this equation, we have three moles of calcium hydroxide produced for every two moles of tricalcium silicate that reacts. So it's a three to two ratio. Um, as we look more into this equation, we can think about uh, limiting and excess reactants. Limiting reactants are present in less than their ideal stoichiometric proportion. So in this example, two moles of calcium, tricalcium silicate, are needed for every seven moles of water, H2O. If we only have 1.5 moles of tricalcium silicate uh, for every seven moles of water, then tricalcium silicate is limiting. Uh, in this example, water, H2O, would be the excess reactant. If we only have 1.5 moles of tricalcium silicate, then we should only need um, about 5.25 moles of water um, rather than seven moles if we were having a perfectly stoichiometric reaction. Um, therefore, uh, we have more water than we need under these ideal or under ideal conditions. In this example of um, cement hydration, you actually do want to provide um, water in excess. Uh, you may add more water than is needed uh, for the chemical reaction um, to the concrete mixture to improve workability. Um, and it also allows, allows it to, you to spread it more evenly. This doesn't decrease strength, so you have to be careful. Um, after pouring cement or concrete, uh, you may have also seen people um, wetting it or like watering it with their watering hose um, as it dries. Both adding water in excess to the mixture and making sure the cement remains moist as it, as it cures are very important when you consider this chemical equation. The world isn't perfect, and the cement may not be perfectly mixed um, so that every seven water molecules can find their way to two tricalcium tri silicate molecules to react. Um, also, you might have evaporation of water as the cement is um, curing. You don't want, you do want all of the tricalcium silicate to be converted to calcium silicate hydrate um, because that's why it's there in the first place. Uh, so providing water in excess improves your chances that all of the tricalcium silicate will actually react. So you may be wondering how much excess should I give in a given situation? So this is called the fraction excess. It's defined as the difference between um, the amount of moles that are actually present and the number of moles you need according to stoichiometry divided by the number of moles you need according to stoichiometry. So in this equation that I have here, um, n is the number of moles actually present 
and Ns is the number of moles needed according to the stoichiometric ratio. For our example, we have 7 moles of water when we only need 5.25 moles. Um, so we have um, 0.33 as our fraction excess or a 33% excess. When the reaction goes to completion, all of the limiting reactant or tricalcium silicate should be reacted and the excess reactant water will still be present unless it evaporated. Let's look at another example. So iron three oxide or hematite uh, can be reduced by carbon monoxide in a furnace. Um, and this is one of the reactions that's involved in making steel. So here we have um, hematite reacting with carbon monoxide to produce iron um, and carbon dioxide. So let's look at this like a uh, batch reaction. So we can use the number of moles reacted, uh, Fe203, or number of moles of reacted Fe203, X, to calculate the amounts of the other reactants and products that we have. So let's say we have a certain number of moles of Fe203 present at the start of the reaction. reaction. So this is N Fe203 naught. Um, we know the number of moles um, present at the end of the reaction is going to be the difference between that starting concentration and the number that reacted. We can also calculate a fraction conversion, or F. So that's the moles reacted divided by the moles fed. So X divided by uh, N, Fe203 naught. We can calculate how much carbon monoxide is present at the end of the reaction provided it was supplied in excess, um, as you would want to do for this type of reaction, and the amount of iron produced as well. So the number of moles of carbon monoxide present at the end is going to be that starting number of moles minus three times the number of Fe2, the number of moles of Fe2O3 that reacted. Uh, and then your iron produced is going to be two times the number of hematite moles that reacted. There are some examples of how you might apply stoichiometry to figure out how much of each reactant you should have present um, and how much of each product would be produced and how to calculate the amount of excess reactant needed in a given situation. Yield and selectivity are two other important concepts when we're looking at chemical reactions. In most situations, undesired chemical reactions are going to occur. So you normally don't have 100% of your uh, desired product produced. So for example, um, Fe or iron in the last example. Yield is the moles of desired product divided by the moles that would have formed ideally. So under these ideal conditions, all of the limiting reactant would react and there would be no side reactions. So only whatever you know, like you want to happen happens. In our previous example, we oxidized hematite, or Fe203. Let's say we placed one mole of Fe203 in our reactor and provided carbon monoxide in excess. Ideally, we would produce two moles of iron. However, um, we may have other reactions occurring and maybe we only produced 1.93 moles of iron. Therefore, we would have a yield of 1.93 divided by two um, of so our yield would be 0.965, or if we wanted a percentage, it would be 96.5%. Sometimes we also talk about selectivity of a reaction. So that's how much of the desired product is produced um, versus the amount of undesired products. Let's say in our hematite iron example that we also produced FeO. Um, if we produced 1.93 moles of Fe and 0 0.07 moles of FeO, then our selectivity uh, is going to be 1.93 divided by 0 0.07, or 27.6. So for every mole of our undesired product, FeO, we would produce 27.6 moles of our desired product, Fe. So finally, what I want to do is apply these to a uh, mass balance problem. So in this example, um, we're going to treat wastewater that contains ammonium. And what we're going to do is we're going to bubble oxygen through the wastewater and convert, uh, enabling the conversion of ammonium to uh, 
nitrate. So basically what we have here is we have wastewater containing ammonium coming into our system. That ammonium has a concentration of 30 milligrams per liter ammonia nitrate. We're adding oxygen by bubbling it through the system and then we're going to be getting cleaner water. So this process is going to be both continuous and also steady state. I'm going to write the chemical reaction here. Basically what we have is an ammonia ion combining with two oxygen ions to form nitrate, um, hydrogen, and also water. We also know that our um, wastewater is going to be flowing at 10 million gallons per day. So because I'm using stoichiometry for this, what I want to do is I want to convert all of our um, all of our flow rates to, to molar flow rates. So I have ammonium over here coming in and then I'm adding oxygen moles per day coming out. I can look at the chemical reaction to see what's going to be in the water exiting the reactor. Um, and so that's going to probably include some excess oxygen. It might even include unreacted ammonium, but I haven't put that here. And it will include nitrate. My question is how much oxygen is going to be consumed in the reactor by this degradation or conversion of ammonium. So in order to do that, the first thing that I need to do is find the molar flow rate of uh, ammonia, or ammonium coming into the reactor. I'm going to use the volumetric flow rate, 10 million gallons per day, and I'm going to multiply that by the concentration of ammonium. Remember, because we have this NH3N, what we're going to have to do is use um, the molecular weight of nitrogen, uh, not NH3 or NH3 plus N in order to solve this. And what I end up getting is 8 times 10 to the 4 moles per day of ammonia needed to, needing to be treated. Then what I can do is go up and look at that chemical reaction and see that for every mole of NH4+, I need 2 moles of oxygen uh, to react. And so really all I need to do is um, use that, or multiply that 8.036 times 10 to the negative 4 moles per day by 2. And I can get the moles per day of, my, of oxygen that I would need. So this is a relatively quick example, but it gives you an idea of how to apply um, the ideas that we've talked about to a mass balance problem. So that concludes our introduction to yield and selectivity. Now that you've seen this video, you should be able to define uh, and or calculate the following and apply them to mass balance equations. The stoichiometry, stoichiometric coefficients, limiting and excess reactants, fraction excess, yield, and selectivity.